And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at the large expansions for Bloodborne. So today I'm placing, I'm putting up three videos, a uh, review of Bloodborne, the board game, so if you want to see how that plays, and then we're taking a look at the different expansions. We're not reviewing them per se, I'm just showing you what's in them. And so in the other video I'm showing all the small expansions. Here are the four large ones, the Chalice Dungeon, the Forsaken Canehurst Castle, Forbidden Woods, and then the box of extra stuff for Kickstarter backers. So a lot of stuff here to take a look at. It's going to be kind of a quick overview. Here we go. So first we're going to take a look here at the Forbidden Woods. Frankly, if they're Forbidden Woods, you shouldn't be going into them, but what have you. So in this, we have a bunch of new tiles, and these tiles are only to be used with this expansion. So there's two different things that are in this expansion, two new things, which is above the Empty Shack. We have Dark Rites and Den of Vipers. But there's also a Forbidden Woods bonus chapter, which you can add to any thing. I don't know why you want an extra chapter. I don't think they understand what the word bonus means. But so you have that, so then you would use those tiles with that. And the tiles are marked here in the corner, so you know. So we got some new creatures. We got the mad one here, who uh, has been out in the woods for a long time. Has a sickle combo. Or an overhead cleave. That's not good. Madness. Then I love these. <laughs> these. <laughs> they managed to, to take a pig and make it look gross. The man-eater boar. So that's pretty nasty, too. And this thing will charge at you. So, got to be careful. Then we have the Hemwick Grave Woman. Um, with a powerful slam and a quick shove. She's carrying around a hammer. Well, I wouldn't mess with her. Then snakes. It's just a, it's a snake ball. And one snake's not bad enough. We got three or four snakes. Five, six, seven snakes heads on this thing. It's a cool model, though. So if it moves into your spot, though, you take a damage. Then we just got snake parasites. I think someone's head turned into a snake or it's coming out of them. Yeah, these aren't as powerful as the other ones. So these are the kind of the main enemies. The big bad guys, we got the Witch of Hemwick, which is actually a pretty small little model here, but um, pretty gross. And then the Shadows of Yarham. These guys got snakes coming out of their bellies. And then, like I said, we have these different decks. We have some, there's a flame sprayer and an elven, and then all these tiles. So this adds basically half the content that's in the base game. So there's a good chunk in here. Then we have the Forsaken Canehurst Castle. There's another expansion, very similar to the last one we looked at here. And this one has, well, actually the nicest and brightest rooms that I've seen in the game so far. Just a bunch of castle rooms. Now these are only used in this particular scenario. So it shows you here, they're only used here, you don't use them in any other campaign. But this has what's called a branching campaign. So chapter one is the Forsaken Castle. And then you have the Queen's Legacy and Martyr's Legacy, which I'm assuming is gonna bring you up against this nasty old king who escaped from Adventure Time, or against Annalise, Queen of the Vile Bloods. How that splits, I don't know. You'll probably be making decisions in this deck. We also got some enemies here that apparently can get worse because we have a blood licker and a starved blood licker. I don't want to mess with the starved one. He has 15 hit points. Um, well, to be clear, I don't actually want to mess with anyone who licks blood. And then, of course, we got Forsaken Castle Spirit who walks around with a dagger. And when she activates, she just comes right to you. Kane Servant. This guy's a little small one. I wonder if he's... Oh, he can flip... He, he, he duplicates. I don't like him at all. And then Lost Child of Iniquity, Grab and Fly. Antiquity, not Iniquity. Well, whatever. And then we got some villainous knights here. Well, I like knights, but these guys look... Oh, my word. Vile Blood 18? 10? Oh, maybe these are bosses or something. That's a really powerful creature. And so that's kind of what's in this set. Oh, there's a cool rooftop tile, which is uh, the Queen's Chamber on the other side. So there you go. Two, well, one, one big mission, actually. Just one. But I'm guessing it's longer than normal. 
So here we have the Chalice Dungeon. Now this is one of the more unique expansions for Bloodborne because what this does is adds two things that aren't anywhere else. First of all, a very quick rule set for Hunter vs. Hunter. So special rules, they even have shields here. I don't know that this is even interesting to me. I, I, I guess so, but the whole point is, is that you fight monsters, but yeah. Anyway, you got four new hunters too. This one's really interesting because it only has one side here detonate and then the, I mean there's only one thing on this side on the other side you got your thrust prime slash and skewer and after you attack you can set this up so he's like a bomb that goes off every other turn that's kind of interesting I like this guy's style here with his top hat and here rifle spear I guess that's how you do it but anyway you can place a card face down to do two damage that's interesting so it's kind of a and he has thrust 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 on that side that's interesting i these are i'm assuming they're they're trickier to run if he kills heal to and move to that i like a lot that's pretty cool with the beast claw and then here her sword very very bloody when you dodge he'll want to deal one to the enemy in your space then you're definitely going to fill her up with dodges for sure um but this also includes what's called the chalice dungeon like this is like a quick play type thing where you'll go through a dungeon which has like different lasers and things like that going on in it but there's an arena that can show up and when you get to the arena boom you fight an enemy but you can pick any boss any three creatures to fight against so it's like a quick and dirty way to play bloodborne speaking of bosses this might be my favorite one look at that thing Arrgh. That's a huge thing. That's the Watch Dog of the Old Lords. And the Undead Giant here is pretty neat, too. You also have a Beast Possessed Idol and Yarnam, a Queen here. And then a bunch of... I thought these guys were bosses. They're not. This actually is almost creeping me out to hold this thing. It's a flower. It's called the fluorescent flower and then there's also scorpions Ugh, hate scorpions poison pincers grave keeper scorpions and yet as disgusting as scorpions are to me this is one of the more normal enemies for the game also look at this oh poor rabbit dog he looks kind of cute um, but he's rabbit so you know be careful with that and then you got the hunting dogs which are not even a little cute i thought they were i don't know did they escape from blade three and then rats. These rats are as big as a dog with a noxious bite. We got bell ringers. Shame. That's kind of cool. And then we got keeper of the old lords. So there's a lot of stuff in this expansion. This is kind of like if you want to play Bloodborne and want some more stuff, this is the expansion where they're like, hey, here is more stuff. And finally, we have the Blood Moon box. This is essentially the Kickstarter stuff. The stuff that you missed if you, if you didn't back the Kickstarter. Now, you can still get more things. I mean, get this somehow, but hopefully this will decide whether it's worth it for you. Oddly enough, the things I want the most are the treasure chests to put out on the board and the little lanterns, just so you can quick see a look where the lanterns are. I like stuff like that. There's also six new heroes that you can take through. There's um, some uh, dolls. I'm not actually sure what these are for. It must be something I haven't seen in Bloodborne. A couple new big bad guys. The Large Nightmare Apostle. <sighs> That's such a unnerving miniature. And then the Small Nighttime Apostles. All right. The Merciless Watcher. Look at this dude. He hits for six. What on earth? Cannot be staggered. So if he pulls a special... You're dead. Of course, he does have this giant saw. Oh, oh, he's much better on the other side. I'd be very cautious to go on this side. I it's just this guy is so scary for me. Anyhow, um, we also have the the Lauren Silver Beast. I don't. His head is sideways. What, what's wrong with this guy? Has fire breath too. That's kind of weird. A large huntsman is included in here. And then the giant lost child. Oh, that's cute. Maybe he won't hurt you. Sure looks like he's going to hurt you. Smash and frenzy stop. Rock toss. Oh, boy. All right. So there's a lot more bad guys in this set, but also a lot of heroes. Um, every time you clear a slot, do one damage in your space. Also, you can't see because you're wearing a triangle on your head. Ooh. Ooh, I do like this crushing slam, though, and heavy swing. 
Oh, but man, only two slots in the side. I don't know if I want to use him. Look how fast this guy is. Combo finisher does plus one for each filled attack slot. So if you have two of them done, the third one, and it's a speed three, that's kind of neat. So there's all kinds of neat things on here. Oh, this guy's carrying a giant wheel around. I'm not sure why. He can take damage and do damage. Eh, I don't like characters like that. On attack speed, do one damage to every enemy within range. Meh. After transforming, your next attack this round gets plus one and plus one. That I like. That's pretty cool. So he just, she's just switching back and forth with that giant mace. So there you go. I don't think that any of this stuff in here is real critical. So if you missed the Kickstarter extras box, you're probably okay. There's enough other expansions out there for you. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, I don't know which of these I would... I mean, the Chalice Dungeon seems like kind of a given. If you're not sure what to get, it's a way to do a one-off game. You'll play a quick version of Bloodborne. I think, I think that's cool. So that's neat to have, and then it gives you extra enemies and stuff to fight. You can pick any three enemies, any boss. So that's a pretty cool thing to have. Like I said, the Kickstarter extras are neat, but you don't need them. And I don't feel like anyone's going to be upset about not having them. And then these other two are bigger campaigns. I don't know that I would get them over the smaller boxes. I would have to see price points and such. I mean, the Forbidden Woods does come with two campaigns. And it looks like the Forsaken Castle, even though it's one branching campaign, technically you could play it twice and do something different the second time. But it looks like it's also a more involved campaign. So there you go. A lot of stuff. It's up to you whether you want it or not. If you, if you don't know what we're talking about, check out my main Bloodborne game review. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.